Hello. <laughs> Fancy seeing you here. I'm gonna talk about this book. And this book alone. This tea is very hot and I need to put it down. Oh no. Ow. It's fine. Hello. Um. It's very hot today. So. I'm gonna be sweating a little bit. But ignore that. And just focus on this book, this book alone. Um, this is gonna be a video of me reading this book. Notice that I'm already halfway and I've just decided that this should be the first book that I make a reading vlog thingy about. And I have uh, annotated. English is not my first language. So sometimes I don't know the words perfectly. That's fine. You'll you will just all know what I mean because you can see it, you know. I've stick at it. You know, there were some things where I was like great content, great, just everything about it screams quality. And then I need to put a sticker next to it. I also stick at chapters, by the way. Anyway, I'm halfway. Uh, and I'm gonna grab a little booklet where a little booklet no it's not a booklet it's a notebook i'm gonna grab a notebook and um in the notebook uh, i've written down some thoughts i had about the book already and uh so and this will be like a little um catching up before the actual vlogging and reading etc begins also this is gonna be the first video I will ever make uh, about books, um, at least uh, the first book vlogging. Uh, and I have decided that I wanted to do it with this book because I'm enjoying the book so freaking much. I'm loving it so, so much. Um, there's like uh, these books, The Magicians, they are like my number one best books that I fucking ever read uh also because i watched the tv show so that just adds to the experience and um i have never ever 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 thought about a book even coming close and a year ago i would have slapped myself for even saying this but you know i think the priory of the orange tree might actually come very close to being equal and taking the number one spot together with the magicians i said it i said it and i feel previous me younger me screaming in the back of my mind like how can i how how can i say this but i've said it and I stand by it, so, you know. That's why I wanted uh, my first book vlog to be about this book, because I'm enjoying that um, it that much, and I just wanted to be able to look back on uh, my experience with this book. And it is summer, so it is a great time to, um, to read, to read outside, to read in very beautiful spots. And I thought the time has arrived for me to make a video like this. I'm gonna grab the book. Hi, this is editing me. Uh, and I realized I forgot to like, uh, give a bit of a summary about what the fuck the book was about. So I'm gonna do that now. Um, I'm just gonna read the back. Not the back, the back has all quotes. I mean, this thingy. Um, where the fuck is it? Does it not have a summary? No, it needs to, right? I don't think it has a summary. It says... Alright. The summary on the back of this beautiful book says... A world divided, a queendom without an hi a, 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 a higher, 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 
A world divided, a queendom without a hair, hair, hair. A world divided, a queendom without a hair, an ancient enemy awakens. It doesn't say anything else. I'm gonna look it up for you. You know, I'm gonna give you like a little bit of a summary. I need to. For you, I shall. All right, welcome back to editing me. Um, I've pulled up Goodreads <laughs> because, I mean, that's the way to go for summaries, right? Um, I'm just gonna read it to you. It says, "A world divided, a queendom without a higher, <laughs> an ancient enemy awakens." Um, the house of Bernet. Has ruled Inish for a thousand years. Still unwed, Queen Sabrin the Ninth uh, must conceive a daughter to protect her realm from destruction. But assassins are getting closer to her door. Eat Durian is an outsider at court. Though she has risen to the position of Lady in Waiting, she is loyal to a hidden society of mages. Eat keeps a watchful eye on Sabrin. Uh, Secretly protecting her from with forbidden magic. Across the dark sea, Tane has trained to be a dragon rider since she was a child, but she but is forced to make a choice that could see her life unravel. Meanwhile, the divided East and West refuse to parley, and forces of chaos are risen from their sleep. It is a good summary of this book. A bit like not summary, but just a good description of this book. It was good enough to interest me, and I'm loving this experience right now. Do I already recommend this book? Yes. I'm not even halfway, but you know, it's good though. So this is um my little book where i write down just thoughts and feelings and just opinions i had about books that i've read um this is like just not really well it is a bit of a review book but more so just thoughts and feelings i had while i was reading it um that's what this book is about and i'm just going to you know read to you what it says about the private orange tree thus far all right so it started off a bit dry in my opinion there were so many people and point of views and characters uh and um <laughs> there weren't like easy ways to remember who met who and which character is like friends of another character and just the, the groups are very difficult to <laughs> keep up with um, I felt at the beginning of the book because they're like there are I think four point well they're basically I would say point of views but they're just basically four different stories um, in the same world and they do connect with one another like one connects a bit with two just because characters know each other and two might connect to three because of worlds, because of uh, uh, their uh, countries, and three might connect to four because of because they bond into each other or something. You know, I'm just naming random things at this point. But that doesn't mean one is connected to four. You know, so they aren't all connected, but one is connected to two, and two to three, and three to four, and four to three, but not one two three <laughs> this explanation but you know you know what i mean you know you know um so i found that a bit difficult uh, at the beginning of the book to keep up with um but i thought the character personalities uh are prominent uh, when interacting with uh others and i still stand by it all the characters have very much different personalities and are very interesting in their own way and I love the interactions and the interactions 
between characters in all the different stories uh, are um, very different and interesting in their own way and just refreshing. It doesn't feel like you're reading a different copy of the same conversation. Um, that's also because the topics are different, are wildly different uh, in each story. Also, this isn't collect. This isn't this isn't a collection of short stories. But I mean, like each chapter, you go to a different part of the world and read about their um, journey. Um, and to keep up with uh, the, the characters and the different stories and who the fuck each person is, I wrote down. Uh, the names of each person and how they relate to each other uh, and even just the writing down helped me a lot with memorizing uh, everybody <laughs> and uh, I um, looked at it a couple of times but just the writing down helped me a ton so I recommend doing that at the start of this book write everybody down and write down how they are connected to somebody. <laughs> it just helps a lot with the just the experience of the book. Um, it just it make sure you create the most comfortable reading experience you can with every book. Um, and later I wrote the characters uh, set the tone or the mood of the story chapter uh, and those tones are really diverse. Uh, and then I name a couple of things like naive, grumpy, hopeful, annoyed, shocking, determined, alert, posh, <laughs> uh, um, desperate, etc. etc. It's just wildly different things. And as a reader, you slow you slow. As a reader, you slowly but surely get to find out, figure out how every perspective is connected to another. I already talked that, about that a bit. Um, yeah, it's really nice. So many amazing plot twists. Jesus. At this point, every chapter has like plot twists. Like I can't even keep up. After each chapter, I just need to pause because I just need to take it all in. Like, wow, that really happened. That really did happen. Jeez. That's a lot. Um, also, what, what, uh, Samantha Shannon is not afraid to like really just <laughs> to shock you with how <laughs> I'm not gonna like get into spoilers here but like this book can get dark so if you love that, which I do, I love it so much, I think it really adds to how good a book can be if the book it really gets down and dirty and dark. I love that. I love that. Um, and this book does that as well. I love that about it. I even, it, I even put like a heart next to it. Like look, I annotate it like uh, the thingies with like a minus and a plus and just a heart. And I really, I really fucking love something. Um, also, I audibly, I audibly gasped for the first time ever in my book life, ever. And I've read like, at this point, I've probably read like 50 books and I've read thrillers and detectives. I am, I am a bitch for those books. I love those so much. And I love creepy horror books as well. I love to be scared out of my mind. Um... And this is the first time ever that I, that I audibly gasped from a book. So just, that's some credit. That is some credit. Just, yeah. You can have those credits. Pride of the Orange Tree. It has those credits. And I'm only halfway. So, you know. Uh, and I love the different religions. Oh, and the way they perceive and then act with women. Women? 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 Very interesting concept. I really thought about it quite a lot and I found it just amazing. And it's not like, well, it's just very interesting how every country has different religion 
he learned about it later in the book like what, what each religion means but like early on you already get that religion is quite a big um a big well a big it is it is a part of the countries and of the characters living in those countries it is just part of their culture and if you're in that country then you notice it <laughs> that just happens um and i really love that and i really love the different point of views that those religions have i find it very interesting very uh, layered um also at some point i got a bit tired of all the plot twists i already commented on that that i need to take a break like each chapter because it's just so much and it's quite a bit overwhelming at times and then i need to just take it all in i just i just i just can't like something very very plot twisty and just very intense happens and then I just, I just need a breath, you know? I just need a breath. I do. Uh, also, there's a ship in this book. And it really doesn't happen very often that I ship characters. But there's a dynamic between two characters, which I absolutely love. I will not go into details because then it will get spoilery. But it just, it's very, just very impressive that this book, like manages to get that out of me that's just very rare for a book to do so i love the the the, the yeah the opportunity to be able to ship characters because of that dynamic very i love that oh also <laughs> there's just a plus here with really enjoy my reading experience well that's why i'm making this vlog um uh, oh, also, I don't really have a clear visual of um, the like monsters, the monsters, the monsters uh, in uh, this book, but I usually don't. I also don't with, um, what's her name again, Cassandra Clare. I always have a different, a difficult time imagining the monsters of her books. Not that I've read a lot, I don't like her. <laughs> uh, <laughs> hot take. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, so that might be a me thing. But I still noticed it. But other than that, I very much find it easy to visualize the world, the rooms, the, the characters, the way the characters move, uh, their body language, I find it quite easy to visualize. So props to this book for that um also this is a small thing no i won't i won't say this no because it might be spoiler so i won't say it um yeah that's all i wrote thus far so that's a bit of a summary for how i felt about the first half of the book right now at this moment at this moment in time I'll probably give this book maybe four and a half stars or maybe like four point seventy five <laughs> or four point nine because I really love it but there's just a lot going on right now and I don't like that I need to take a break each time it's like it's ten pages so that's like a bit that's a bit of a critical point i hope uh this will be a very interesting uh, and beautiful video and i hope it is entertaining for future me and for potential other people who are not future me who are watching this so yeah Iconic behavior only. Only iconic behavior.
Mm -hmm. Oh my god. This book. Oh my god. Hello. I finally am getting around to uh, finishing up the video for the Priory of the Orange Tree. It has been a month since I finished reading it. Um, I finished reading it the, in October last year. And I'm now like half a year later making a video finally finishing the video <laughs> the the like the clips previously to this it was like summer and right now at this moment it is snowing outside so it has been a while and the clips made me crave summer again so um uh, private orchestry i finished reading it in october started in march it actually took eight months for me to finish. Well, it is a big book. It is a very thick, it's, it truly is a big. It is a murder weapon. It basically is. It has, I'm sure I mentioned it before. It has like 800 pages and it is the thickest book I have read in my entire life. It has also uh, helped me um, not fear big books anymore. Now I'm like looking at a book which has like 500 pages and I'm like, oh, easy. That's a short book. That's, I'm, there's literally no fear in me anymore. And even I also bought uh, Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norell. That's also a thick book. It's almost, I think it's almost as thick as this one. And I'm not even that afraid anymore. I'm like, well, I will get around to it someday. I'm quite looking forward to a thick book. Again. Anyway, my final thoughts on the Priory of the Orange Tree. As you saw in the beginning of this video, I really, really, really loved the beginning. And I was really fucking hyped for it. And, uh, well, that changed. Um, I will just read to you what I, at the time in October, put in Goodreads. All right, here we go. My final thoughts, my summary for the Priory of the Orange Tree. Before the story focuses on one character, it is a very good book. One I would easily give five stars. It is filled with interesting characters in all unique situations. They are all uh, they are well written and the plot of each story is edge of your seat gripping worthy. <laughs> Character drama uh, and motivations make you care for them and cheer for them. The world and different religions is and are interesting to figure out and piece together. The book had guts to kill off characters and turn real dark. Um, I was almost certain I had found a number one favorite book. But the magic of the book, and with it my enthusiasm, disappeared once the story changed from multiple point of views to one. And it turned out to be one that was not interesting enough. Um, the writing became almost like a plot summary of itself. So like, it lost a lot of its charm. And it basically, instead of showing you what was happening, it was telling you what was happening. Um, and you should just take it for what it is. Or sometimes it was like they summarized the actions and didn't really put the opinions of the characters in it. Or the way that the characters felt about it. Or made the characters um, interact in a unique and interesting way. That it did do that at the beginning of the book. But later on in the book it did... It, mm, it doesn't happen anymore. It's it's basically just a summary of itself. Uh, just the characters started to feel one dimensional, and I felt so confused about why the character why the book had lost its heart. There were a couple of great spectacular moments, especially once we got back to multiple point of views. So that's later on in the book. 
Um, but overall, the robot-like summary, one-dimensional vibe still had the upper hand. And that's, well, that's, that vibe was later on in the book. After you basically, well, in the beginning, it's very much getting to know an entirely new world that I absolutely love. I love the world. And entirely new characters that are fantastic. The characters are very diverse in um, the way they see the world, uh, in who they are as a person as well, but also just their philo philosophy uh, on life and on the world that they live in. And I really, 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 really loved the way um, the religions in this book were explained and were compared to one another and the way characters talked about their own religions within the book. It, I don't think it is... Well, it, it isn't like actual religions that we have here on Earth, but just the religions in the book. They might be based on the religions we have here, but I didn't really notice, but I'm not a very religious person, so don't know what that says about the book. Can't really have an opinion about it because I'm not an expert on it. Um, overall, I thought the book was... Okay, I thought the world was great. The characters in the beginning were great, had so much potential. But the, the decision of instead of going forth with these like four main characters point of views that it kept switching between in the beginning instead of sticking to that eventually you get like 100 pages or maybe 50 pages it felt like way too long on one character and that was really i don't think that was a great choice but that really made me lose interest because you want the point of views of other characters and i also felt like there were a lot of chapters that were like very much like hyped up within the book and then it came to that point and it just felt underwhelming i was like well is this the thing that has been like a crucial part of the world or of the character and then it is revealed or there's a confrontation or something like that and it just falls flat you know, it isn't as beautifully written or like well thought out or basically kind of like a summary or like feels very distant to the character. And that really, you know, that's what I mean with summary of itself. Very distant. And that's too bad because in the beginning that wasn't the case. And like later on when you're like almost finished with the book, uh, like near the end, um, it gets that spark back and uh, they're like uh, the characters start acting like themselves again and it is written truly like you know which character it is about even uh, without like uh, the name dropping uh, so it picks it up again so I, I absolutely for sure know that this writer can be a phenomenal writer Samantha Sharon can be a phenomenal writer um, I just think that the, that one decision maybe threw her off as well. And therefore kind of fell flat. I gave it three stars on Goodreads out of the five. Um, I do still think it is the prettiest book that I have, that I own. It is gorgeous. It is gorgeous. And... Um, also uh, about the um, second book or like a prequel that is coming. I was really, really looking forward to like a prequel from like a certain part of the history within the book. Because, uh, well, the book also is talking quite a bit. Well, not quite a bit. It also talks a little bit about the history of the entire world. Uh, and I was very interested in a particular bit. And I hoped that the book was the next book. Or like the prequel book. Uh, would be about that part of the history. But it isn't. So. I'm not sure if I'm going to read the next book. 
because I was so convinced in the beginning because I love the book so much, this book, Private Orange I loved it so much in the beginning. I was so convinced and then it just disappointed me because it couldn't get the momentum going. It couldn't get the same writing style going. And then eventually it picked it up again, but that was like, that was like 300 pages difference and that's quite a lot of pages. So that was too bad to me, for me. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna read the next book she publishes. Because, well, that was a weird accent. Because when, if, if the book is again this big, I'm not sure I will. I'm not sure I will. Because then a large portion of it will also kind of, I will predict, I will probably think that a large portion of it will disappoint me again, like it did here. But maybe that won't be the case. I do not know. Maybe when I see it in the bookstore, when it is finally published, maybe I'll be like, heck yeah, I'm buying it. Just because it will probably be as beautiful as this book. And who knows? Who knows? This is also why if I don't like a book, I will just continue reading it. Because who knows how much better it will become. And if I quit reading, then I will never know. And I gotta know, you know?